So, um, yeah, as I say, for those of you that don't know me, my name is Barry Cranford. I'm the, uh, I'm the founder of the London Java community. Uh, and I also run RecWorks, which is a tech recruitment company. Um, so here at RecWorks, we, we try to find uh, ways that recruitment can be a force for good in the tech industry beyond just getting people jobs. Um, and that's usually around uh, learning, mentoring, uh, building communities and, and that kind of thing. Uh, it, it all came about when I found myself spending all day every day talking to Java developers, mainly that weren't looking for work and, and just thinking that there must be a better way that we can, I can use my position of speaking to you know, 30, 40 people telling me they're not looking at the moment um, every day. And that, that idea of trying to find a way to, to do something to connect everyone is, is what became the LJC way back in 2007 um, and it has launched what, what it is today. Um, so we've, uh, we, we've spent the last 12 years or so uh, experimenting in, in various different um, communities and initiatives and conferences and ways that we can bring people together around this, this concept of, of learning. I think something that um, Oli, Oli can talk about as well with, with Comfy today. Yeah. Um, so um, yeah, the latest things that we've done, the latest groups are around um, th this idea of bringing people together that are on similar learning paths. Uh, so people that are maybe looking to step into the conference circuit. Um, we've, we've got a few groups for aspiring speakers, um, CTOs and, and, and that sort of thing. And so it's all powered by recruitment. So we don't actually make any money from anything that we do other than getting people jobs. And then part of that money goes back into driving this. So if anyone's looking, especially here in London, uh, then please do look us up and, and bear us in mind. Uh, anyway, on to tonight. Um, Oli, I'm gonna give I'm gonna give it a go on your surname. Oli Mahasova uh, is a uh, is a, <laughs> yes, is, that's is it close? Good. That's yes, good. come that's on. Very close. <laughs> um, so Oli's a Scala software engineer um, who's worked as a consultant on various projects uh, focused on, on improving client experience with Scala and functional programming. Uh, she's a keynote speaker at Scala conferences, uh, including uh, Scala I/O uh, 2019 and Scala Comp 2019. And it's also hosting some lovely podcasts, Programming Love and Scala Love. Um, she's a co-founder and CEO of Confi, uh, the company that draws tech experts from around the world for speaking engagements. So, Oli, I'll, I'll hand over to you. All right. Hello, everyone. I'm so happy to be here. I would love if you could actually turn your camera on and say hi. Don't be too shy. I'm not going to bite you. Hello. Hello, where are you speaking Hi, from? Hello. Dear audience, we're friends here. Pradeep, you're muted. Uh, hi, Ali. Hello. Hi. Hello, hello. Uh, okay. So I want this session to be interactive, so feel free to ask questions during the talk and uh, just you know, if you have any comments, you can actually ask me, even if it's not necessarily about the topic that I'm going to talk, to talk about, but about Scala in general, because this is the Scala talk. And let me try to share my screen. So I'm sharing my desktop. Oops. Can you see that? And I can see you. Yes. So uh, if you have questions, uh, about Scala syntax or whether we use ever, anything in production like that, please feel free. So my name is Oli um, and for the next 40 minutes or so, I'm going to talk about the Scala programming language and how it can be used for small scale few line scripting tasks. It's quite different from normal Scala talks with large scale application building distributed systems, but I think it's interesting for the audience who are new uh, to Scala. And I'm going to demonstrate REPL driven development using uh, the REPL for interactively run small amounts of code without needing a heavy weight project setup. So having said that, I wonder uh, what's your experience with Scala? You can comment on that. Please, people do. Don't be shy, warm up. So what's your experience with Scala? Uh, I did some for a big bank a few years ago when I thought that it was new and cool, uh, but mm -hmm. I haven't touched it for three or four years now. Okay, anyone else? Anyone new? 
I have used Scala for a bit. Um, I'm a consultant and uh, I was mainly using because like we used Apache Spark. Uh, so uh, I mean, uh, now I'm, I'm a full fledged Java developer though. Oh, I see, I see. So for those who, um, so I've already been introduced. So I'm a Scala developer speaker and Sarah of Confi. And we're doing some conferences and I want to promote a few of them because they're for Java developers as well. Actually, Java Love, our conference uh, is uh, mainly about Java, but about JVM languages too. So if you go to Java, uh, jlab.confi.care, uh, you will see how many big names and awesome speakers we have. It's online conference and it will be in December and uh, it's free. So that's the best part. Okay, motivation for this talk is simple, actually. We start with some psychology, positive reinforcement. So this, this effect that appeals the most to me, you know, your brain learns to favor certain actions when they're rewarded in the past. This reward could be a bonus from your boss when they say, great job, you feel, oh my God, I want to do that again. When your audience say uh, to you that they loved your talk, you want to do that talk again. Maybe change a little bit, but do that again. And every time your rebel experiment succeeds and you solve a puzzle or a problem, your brain feels rewarded as well. So you feel like, oh my God, uh, this is so fast. It's faster than you, that your common IDE and you, that makes you iterate more often. Uh, and these experiments lead to more reinforcement. So I, I love that. I love working with uh, REPL. And it's easy with the one that I'm going to show you. So, but let's go to the technical details. Not only positive reinforcement. Here is the simplest uh, ever hello world in this case hello confluent because I was showing the same uh, intro to the confluent team so I didn't change my slides sorry about that but that happens because I, I did that only a few hours ago so excuse me <laughs> but hello confluent nothing sophisticated but if you look at the project tree, you will find a lot of temporary classes that are uh, that are created by SBT because SBT needs them to run that. And Maven also would need the files. And when you write something so simple, one line of code, you actually don't want to end up 200 with 262 directories and 111 files. Can you believe this is the simplest ever application. And in order to run it through SBT or Maven, I will end up with that. But now imagine you want to delete only one file in on your file system in one folder. And instead of deleting it, you're creating so many files. So that's not good. Also, apart from the space overhead, there is a time overhead. Here, I'm measuring how long it would take to run this Hello Confluent application. It's, it takes 5.5 seconds to do so. And uh, that's mainly comes not from the uh, compilation, but purely from the build tool. The compilation takes one second, and this is the first one, uh, first run, and if I run it, uh, more times the class path would be cached and it will run faster. So in comparison, Python takes 91 milliseconds and Bash 7 milliseconds. It's thousand times difference. The, the, that's, does it mean that there is a code size gap? Does it mean I cannot use my Scala application for one-liners? Does it mean that People will drop down to bash if they want to deal with the file system in one line or to Python if they need uh, to deal with 100 or two line, 200 lines of code, whether they want 
to deal with the file system or not, but that's what we did uh, at Expedia before, actually that what they did at Expedia before I came there to work because I rewrote everything in Scala and that's where the Ammonite project comes in. The Ammonite project is the Scala REPL with syntax highlighting, multi-editing, the ability to load Maven artifacts directly in the REPL and many other quality life improvements. So I run it with Ammonite, the uh, script, the same script, and it takes 2.3 uh, seconds for the first time and, zero, and 623 milliseconds for the second run which is still, uh, I think it, it still uh, takes way longer than bash, but I, I think it's acceptable uh, rather than being a huge pain in the neck for us. So for today, I want to demo three things. Feast pass, uh, web scrapping. We're going to scrap uh, Confluent website uh, to grab some information from there, uh, save it into a file and uh, read it from the file and then web crawling. Uh, this is this exercise to work with uh, Wikipedia API and see how we can send requests there and how we can uh, actually grab the information and analyze it. So the first one is FISBAS. And for now, I want us to move to the REPL actually, and uh, it can be installed easily with homebrew command if you're using Mac, or uh, by the way, how is the size of the, uh, can you see that? Okay, good. And um, uh, run it simply by saying M in your uh, terminal, then you print your uh, commands, Scala code, print hello, very important one, the most important one, then do operations, or you can look at the uh, system. Oops, let me move it from my way. System environment variables. You can also shrink the size of the window. Oops, and now the output will be uh, smaller. But as you can see, we're missing some details from there, but there is a tool to browse the result. This one is result three. So we can browse it, move around, see all the values, Java main class, whatever we have here. Uh, then I want us to write our uh, first function and uh, see the pretty output. I'm going, not going to type that, but you could see the pretty output of this really nicely render it. Then let's write a foo case class integer string string two. Now, I forgot the word class. Now we can actually create objects with case class. For those who are not familiar with the uh, syntax, it's just a class with setters and getters, but in, in a nicer way in Scala. It's like data object, uh, data class in Kotlin, if you're familiar with Kotlin. So let's create first. second and then we can save as seven. Oh, they fit in one line but if we had something longer for example on cow here we move several times no what's wrong with it like this oops what did I do 
like this and make it even smaller. Then it would print every uh, variable on the uh, its own line. So it's easier for you to read. Also, um, we can uh, look at the commands that REPL has because there is autocomplete. So here it shows the history, for example. So you can look at the commands that you already printed. I did this, I did that. So they're all here. We can look at the imports. So this is uh, the what is imported, the results. Uh, we can also define functions. Therefore, does nothing, or let's do fees bus. Have you ever did an interview question with fees bus? Anyone? It's a popular one, right? Don't be afraid to talk. Yes, yes, it is. It's a popular yes. one. <laughs> so I'm writing it for you. We can um, actually discuss whether it's enterprisey or not. But I've seen a lot of enterprise solutions where it's like, I don't know, 10 classes and something crazy. Here we match on the result. And as you know, if it's zero, zero, it's pattern matching. So we calculate the result and then uh, match it against the cases. The first case is super simple. These bus. The second case, unfortunately my keyboard doesn't work uh, today. So I have to do that with mouse, but okay. Case default. Actually, my camera, my fancy camera doesn't work today. So I'm on my normal, like not so fancy camera. That's always happens when, when you want to do a presentation, you have to, you know, everything will go wrong. So we have fees, buzz and nothing. Here, I want you to pay attention that it's a multi-line encode so I can actually, instead of being pain, painful for me, I can go uh, and, uh, you know, edit every line and do that really quickly. So, okay, we have fees bus. Now we can run it. And now, for example, your interviewer is saying, this is too simple. I want you to change that to 20. So it's harder. Yeah, now we run the fees bus here. I'm searching through the history. I'm running fees bus again and see the the output is different from the first time. So uh, this is the simplest way to start writing your functions when you depend only on uh, Scala and uh, writing your functions in here. So you can also start writing something, fees, for example, uh, click on the uh, up error, up button, and uh, it will show you what you have in history that fits, uh, the, that matches this word. So I'm searching through the history. Very convenient because uh, usually, normally in the, uh, uh, REPL, you have to, you know, copy what you have and then find the line on which you need to change that and things like that. No history search. Okay, what else? Uh, yeah, as I said, there is autocomplete and browse. So we can move. Uh, now we know a little bit about this um, tool and I want us to do an actual task, web scrapping. So for that uh, task, I'm going to use uh, JSUP library. And I believe everyone familiar with JSUP library. Am I right? It's so old. 
Yes. So, and it's in Java and um, simply enough, what we do, we copy the library and here I forgot that I need to import JSUB dependency into my REPL. So what I do is easy. I just say ev dot and here I have my previous ev or JSUB. This is the uh, group. This is the name of the artifact JSUB and the version. And then I import everything. This dash means um, import everything in Scala, the uh, all uh, everything that in that class. So now if we run this uh, command again, well, we got the output. This is the Wikipedia page. We can go to Wikipedia, wikipedia.org, English, and see some Wikipedia, the free encyclopedia. This is from the title and we can do the title like that and then grab the headlines but let's move to Kafka tutorials website so Kafka tutorials website has a few cards each of these has some exercises apply a function to the data aggregate data and each of these cards has uh, the use case example of use case so you can actually open them and read about this but i thought this is not convenient what i really want is i want the use cases to be present here to be i want to read all the use cases and then move to the tutorial instead of opening each of them so i can do that programmatically using uh jsoup and ammonite rebel so what I'm going to do is we're going to change the uh, wikipedia.org site with the Kafka tutorials. Oh, sorry. With the Kafka tutorials. Now we've got this. Then uh, we can go and inspect, not view page source. We can go and inspect each of these cards. So this is the class card, card, and each of them has uh, a table with the uh, link to the tutorial and its name. So uh, on JSUP web page, we can see that we can select using the uh, CSS selector syntax. We can select certain um, part of the page. So here, let's name it cards, cards. And we can say, please select dot card. This dot card comes from here. Then li comes from here and then anchor tag, this one. So now we have a list of cards. We can browse them again and we can see that there is Kafka consult, uh, consumer producer basics and uh, consult producers and consumer basics, the title of that talk, of this, uh, sorry, card tutorial. And then uh, for each of them, and we can look at the, uh, size of what we grabbed it's 42. so uh, now uh, we want to convert this uh, select elements to scala for this we need to import java converters mm. scala collection dot java converters perfect and now we can say cards.s scala. So now it's a buffer collection. Now we can iterate through them. And we're going to iterate and do the same. 
uh, select, uh, go to that web page and select this element, which is uh, example with a title and with a text. So we want to grab this text and combine that with the information uh, about the uh, URL and uh, the title of the uh, of the tutorial. So what we're going to do is uh, just create a variable tutorials. Tutorials for card, card, inside cards. We're going to yield uh, the URL. And here again, we can look at the JSUP example. They, they're, they're giving us example of how to grab the URL. So we're just going to copy this and say card dot href. Perfect. Then we're going to print what we are doing. Scraping URL. This is Scala syntax for uh, printing variables. And as you can see, the REPL uh, kindly highlights the syntax. Then we do the same. We create a doc with JSUP connect. But we use this URL and get the result. Then we need to grab a text from this. So we've got URL, we're on this page now, and uh, we're gonna do dot, dot select. And here dot example and dot text. We should convert it to Scala again, grab the head option, because what if it doesn't, one of the cards doesn't have the example of use case, and then map it to text. I'm not sure how good you can see that. Let me do this and put it in the middle. Um, and then we return URL, then card, text, and text. Card text is the, um, card text is the title of that card. As you can see, it, it, it has text in here, the anchor text. So now we can see that it grabs all the information. Browse. So now we can see the, uh, for each uh, of the elements, it has the URL, the title, and the example. So now we can write this. Um, sorry. Come again. I couldn't hear you. So now we can write it uh, using the built in library OS. We can write it into the uh, file. So what we can do is we access the uh, current folder and we say toots .json and we use another uh, building library, Ubicle, 
and the documentation is available on GitHub and uh, on a separate site for Ubiquil and for OS uh, about how to use that. But what's nice, it's already in here in this REPL, built in, nothing to. So we've written it um, on the web, or on the file, so now we can read it. So, but as you can see, it's not uh, nicely rendered. So what we could do, we could add the indent here or, oh no, file already exists. By the way, you can look at the list of the files in current directory. So I can see exactly this. To JSON existed. So I'm going to rename it to it indented and now read it again. Oh, read it. Sorry. So now we have a file um, and we can browse. Now we have a file uh, which contains all the information for each of the tutorials uh, on the web page. And you can send that uh, back to your uh, other services if you need to render that for the website or something. And there are built-in uh, libraries that allow you to uh, create HTMLs in this uh, REPL, but I'm not going to show them. But uh, it's easy to, to do that from the REPL as well. But we're going to move to the next um, to the next task. It's web crawling. So for example, um, on Wikipedia, on Wikipedia, I want to know uh, which uh, pages are uh, within certain distance from the given one. So for example, United States or USA. And I want to uh, see that North America is within distance one, continent is within distance two, Asia is within distance three, and so on and so forth. And I want to print all the links. For that, we're going to use uh, Wikipedia API instead of just uh, scrapping the file and you can go to the uh, Wikipedia web page and uh, see the uh, API. I'm not going to go into details how uh, we do that, but um, first we're going to send the request to the Wikipedia. Uh, there is a built-in library requests which allows you to do that and you need to pass Oops, you need to pass uh, the name of the page and the URL uh, which you want to across and then parameters. It's a sequence of uh, next things. And this is from Wikipedia API, action query. That means uh, we want to grab everything from the page then um, title you say then uh, property all links all links and the format Wikipedia supports uh, multiple formats but we want to see um, JSON because we know how to work with JSON. Yes, so unrecognized parameter title titles. But 
by the way, you can see the last exception that you had. Oops, where is the last exception? Yeah, it will show you a file already exists. Because this one is not exception, actually, it's a, re a response to the one with the uh, problem. But basically what you get is you get a page uh, where there is a title, you say, and there are links. Uh, so United States is distance one, uh, then Wikipedia production policy, Wikipedia redirection, and, and so on. So instead of writing everything uh, from scratch, I want to show you the script that I prepared beforehand here. Basically, it does the same thing. It, it, it has a function fetch links uh, where you pass a string and you run everything uh, with uh, this API and then uh, using the built-in MuJSON library, you, you uh, read the query. Where is this? Uh, query, then pages, 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 yes, pages and what's inside the title. Uh, links, yes, what's inside the links and the title grab from that. So this is a simple function. Then uh, in order to calculate the files that are distant from that, uh, you just simply do the breadth first search. So you have seen set where you put your start title, you have a current set where you put your start title, and then in a range of from zero to depth, uh, you do uh, go and fetch links for the title. And then Everyone wrote that at uh, interviews, so uh, you have to make sure that you didn't add the ones that contains in scene and in current. And then another building function, time, which uh, helps us to figure out how long does it take to run certain function. And here I pass USA and the distance to. So let's run it. So we go out for this. Uh, I have this file on my uh, local. It's called wiki.scripts, sc, Scala script. And I'm just saying uh, ammonite wiki.sc. And it runs it. So these are the uh, things that are within distance to from the main page. So we can see wiki uh, slash Wikipedia and then write the billions and billions. It's here or let's do Wikimedia Foundation. Also here and so on. But this is not interesting when you have to, you know, go back and forth between your file and the uh, rebel and run it again and again. So uh, it can actually watch files for changes. Uh, so we just say watch.sc and we can make changes. So let, let it run for the first time. Oh, it's already done that. Now it's watching. So I can change it to three, save it. And yes, it took nine seconds now. And there are more uh, links in this. So you can actually connect to the remote server and do watch files and connect to your um, system and debug it in production. And I know nobody wants to say that they do that, but usually senior developers feel like there are moments when you have to do that. <laughs> so you can connect with Ammonite and do that or write scripts 
uh, which do the uh, deploy a server somewhere instead of Python or uh, other things. And um, that's it actually for today. So this is all from my side. Any questions? Don't be shy. Hi, Ali, I've got some questions. Yes. Firstly, thanks very much for your talk. It was really, really interesting. Mm -hmm. um, and it was uh, really interesting to see you sort of evolving um, your code uh, interactively against the website and getting stuff back. Um, yeah. I'm really interested in understanding better um, the workflow that you would follow as you're using the REPL. So uh, particularly if you're coding away in your REPL and you get something that's it's now working really well and you're happy with it, what do you do then? Do you, is there some way of dumping it out to produce the, the Scala script? Yes, there, there is a way to save session. So if you go to the Ammonite uh, website, Uh, you can see the uh, features, save load session. Let me grab it. And so would that typically be your workflow or would you more likely work with the uh, work and watch mode against uh, coding directly into the script? Uh, so usually what I do is I, I write some code and I'm when I'm happy with that, I save that into a file and then I just read from file because there is a, an option to uh, import your file so that the functions from that file are available in your uh, REPL as well. Okay, cool. Thank you. Mm -hmm. On top of that, you can just save session uh, into the stack, continue to do something else, and then just do load. So there is a stack with push and pop, like save and load sessions. So you can understand if you imported something wrongly, you can just uh, push it out. Really robust tool. I, I, I advocate for that. It's a cool something, a uh, life changer for me. Any other questions? I should stop sharing my screen so that I can see more people. Don't be shy. Hey. Hi, uh, Oli. Thanks very much yeah. for your presentation. It's very nice. Um, I had a question. I've actually come from the closure uh, programming language. I've done. Uh, it's very REPL driven development. It's pretty hot over there. Uh, what sort of IDEs uh, integration we use? I mean, Clojure is very gung ho on you know Emacs. People like to use other other things as well. But you know, it has a very nice workflow where you can uh, evaluate expressions. For example, written your code. Uh, kind of like mm -hmm. how Scala worksheets are there in IntelliJ. Uh, for example. Yeah. So, what is kind yeah. of your preferred uh, tools uh, when you're using it? Would you do it in Bash as you sh just showed us? Or are there uh, so any other ways of doing it? Easy read or uh, uh, IntelliJ supports Ammonite as well. So worksheet can uh, run with Ammonite on IntelliJ and it's um, much better because you can add uh, imports uh, to the file instead of adding, creating this whole project with 262 directories as I sh said uh, at the beginning, you can create just one file and add dependencies on the floor uh, to external libraries. So I do uh, use IntelliJ with that as well. <clears throat> or uh, there is uh, Metal's IDE, which is based on uh, VS Code. That's okay. good too. All right, cool. Thank you. That was very, uh, very nice. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, something in chat. Is this request library from Lehio? It's all from Lehio. Ah, I forgot to say, you guys, the guy who uh, 
shout out to Lihayo because this is all that he created and I basically built my talk based on his book called Hands on Scala and it's a fantastic book so and it's a fantastic set of libraries that he created so yes. Oh, just one more thing, Oli. I just uh, mm -hmm. realized. So uh, I saw on the description for this talk that you are one of the co-founders talk uh, or organizers for J, J Love or J. Yes, that's correct. Think? So yes. that that's happening at some point soon. Is it next week? December. December. Oh, sorry, in in December. All right. In okay. December, and it's free for everyone. So register. Go to jlove.confi.care. Cool. Uh, and register yeah. for that. And also That's we cool. have CVP is open. So if you want to present there, we're welcoming first time uh, speakers and uh, seasoned speakers. So please do that if you're interested. Uh, is there any deadline for uh, submissions for the CFPs? Uh, November 1st. Okay, all right, cool. I might put my hat in there. All right, yeah. cool. Thank that you, nice. thanks so much. Yeah. All right, guys, thank you for listening. If you have any questions, you can find me on Twitter. My DMs are open. It's Oli underscore Kitty. So see you around, and I hope to see you at my conference, jlove.confi.care, as I said. Thanks very much, Oli. Yeah, thank you for listening. for listening. OK, should I stop the recording then? Yeah, probably. Oh uh, no, I we have Constantine who's the host. He can probably do that. All right. Anyway, thank you. Bye bye. Thanks. Thank you. Bye. bye.